Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about building backend stuff, APIs, and other related things with Cloudflare Workers. Okay. Cloudflare Workers, it's a service that Cloudflare offers, and we'll get deep into this in a second. But I can tell you that it's really, really powerful. The moment that you understand how it works and all the possibilities that it has, it opens up to a lot of different implementations that can help you step up your projects. So let's dive into it. That's it. Sweet. So first of all, what is Cloudflare Workers? Um, Cloudflare Workers, it's a, it's a serverless service, okay? That allows you to run functions as any other serverless um, service, but it has a fail um, differences between the competitors that are very, very important. Okay, so let, let's let's just instead of thinking about Cloudflare Workers for a, for a second, let's think about how a traditional server works. Okay, we can think about a, a Node.js server or a PHP server. It doesn't matter. A server, it's a machine that is located somewhere. Okay, and that you are paying for that machine. So somewhere in a very big warehouse, there is a small device that has a piece of memory that it's um, allocated just for you. And, and that device has some computing power and some memory, and it's connected to the network. And then it has some requests that are coming in the device, and the device processes those requests and outputs some responses. Okay, that's that's a server, and that's ha this is how servers have been traditionally since the beginning of of internet. Okay, and that server it's a physical machine that is located somewhere, um, and usually when you pay for that, when you have one of these services, you are paying a, a fixed a fixed amount for a dedicated machine. So maybe you're paying just five bucks for a very simple machine that it's also shared between many other users or maybe you're paying more money for a specific dedicated machine that just for you that has a specific amount of memory a specific amount of computing power etc okay it depends on the amount of money that you pay you get something uh, that it's best or worse but um it, it's based on what you're paying constantly okay with the arise of the serverless approach there are many services um, but the serverless approach takes a different, a different um, point of view approach. Let's call it. However, um, instead of you paying for a machine that is yours, okay, instead of having a server that uh, that you're paying each month a fixed amount of price for a fixed amount of memory and computing power, instead you just pay for requests. So instead of having a dedicated machine for you, every request that you're using uh, that your users are sending. It's going to a um, a data data center is usually called that it has thousands and thousands of machines and you don't know what machine is going to process that but some some machine is going to process that request the machine is going to know that it's your your backend uh, that should be processing that request so it's going to compute that and it's going to make a response okay so instead of being just one single machine that's processing everything it can be any machine at any time. But still, uh, and the way that serverless works is that you you don't pay for you know for a fixed amount of of memory computing power. Instead, you pay for per request. So the the user makes the request, and then for the milliseconds that that request is being computed, it's being processed. Um, the the company is tracking that time, so they know okay you've been using um the services for this amount of time or you. That our machines have had, I don't know, like a million requests. So we're gonna charge you that. Okay, it's it's based on usage. Um, but still, serverless doesn't mean that you are not restricted to a certain location. Okay, so a a server, as I mentioned before, a server is a machine that it's living somewhere. Okay, that machine can be. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've um used services in the past where you uh, it involves some backend or some database. Usually. Yeah, you get the experience where you have to select the location of the database or or the the the, the server. Like you have to select if you want it to be on North Carolina, it has to be on on Berlin, it has to be on 
on Tokyo, Japan, you, you have to select that location because you're still being tied to a specific data center. Okay. But with Cloudflare workers, this changed when they introduced the edge network concept. Okay. There are now other services that offer that. We'll get to that in a second. But Cloudflare offers what's called edge network. And this is what you can see here. Can you guys see my screen? You probably can. I think I'm sharing. Yeah, cool. So what you can see here, it's all the data centers of Cloudflare. Okay. These centers are actually powered by Cloudflare's uh, CDN. One of the, the services that Cloudflare already provided before launching Cloudflare Workers was a global CDN. And a CDN is essentially just um, a caching network where um, we serve the content from the closest data center to the user. Meaning that uh, if a user is located, let's imagine I am located in Spain, um, in the original server maybe was uh, located in nor North, um, North America. So then this means that your request had to travel all across the world to get the data and then come back, okay? But with the Edge network, we overcome that problem by serving the the request and the responses, by, by serving the responses from the closest data center of the user. So for example, I live actually here in close near to Barcelona, which means that when I interact with the Cloudflare network, I'm going to send the request to the Barcelona data center, and I'm going to get the request from the Barcelona data center, meaning that it's going to travel this this much instead of maybe a server that is located in North America and it should travel all the way to the server and then go back again to me. So this edge, this edge concept, um, it's essentially a way of serving the content as close as possible to the user, the same as a, a content delivery network would work as a CDN, which is the same thing. It caches the content and it serves it from a closest place instead of the original location of the server. So a Cloudflare workers, it's a mix of serverless where you don't have a physical machine that you're paying for it for a specific amount of, um, of computing power. Instead, you just pay per request. Plus, it's on the edge, meaning that, that, um, that those requests are going to be processed the closest where the user is located. You should be aware that the runtime of Cloudflare workers, it's not a Node.js runtime, okay? When you're running Cloudflare worker, you are running a, a in the V8 engine, which is the same one that Chrome uses, Chromium and Node.js. But there are not all the APIs that you would find in a browser, nor in Node.js. Okay, in Node.js you have access, you know, to, to a lot of APIs that are specific to Node.js, like the file system, buffers, cryptography, stuff like that. And in Cloudflare Workers, all these APIs are reduced. Some of them are existing. Some of them you can access them. Um, but some others are not there. So you should be aware that using Cloudflare Workers, it's not yet a valid use case for everything related to backend. Okay? I tried to do everything with Cloudflare Workers, but if you have a very specific use case where you really need, for example, using some Node.js package that, it's, that it makes heavy use of, of Node.js APIs, then it might not be fit for you. But I think that it's, it's 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 fit for ninety five percent of the use cases, so it should be good for for almost everyone. Okay, so um, oh, I, uh, one thing that I mentioned uh, that I forgot to mention is that Cloudflare Workers is cheap as hell. <laughs> it's super cheap, and you can see it. Let's go to platform pricing. Essentially, with a free plan, you get thousand requests per day, which is way more than many websites need. So most of you can have essentially free backends with Cloudflare Workers, which is super nice. But even if you have a lot of requests and you have to pay for them, you can see how it just costs 50 cents per million requests, which is a no brainer. It's super cheap and it's super powerful, super fast. That's why I really love this service. Let's just jump into something that Cloudflare already provides. Um, by the way, I'm checking the the developer's uh, documentation. 
So you can find it if you just Google Cloudflare Docs or Cloudflare Workers Docs, Docs uh, even better. Okay, you'll find some guides. It's really detail detailed, so you can follow along even if I'm not streaming. You can just check the docs. It's really powerful. But one of the things that they offer, and let's start with that, it's in the learning, um, in the learning docs, they have something called the playground. Cloudflare Workers, it has a very simple API. This code, it's all you need to create an API endpoint. Okay, that's it. There are just two things going on. A listener, which essentially listens for any requests that are coming, and then a response. That's it. Request, response, you got an API. In this case, this is a hello world API, but we can we can try to do uh, more stuff. Cool. So let's let's inspect what's going on here. Um, we can change that. Let's just change it for a second. Let me save. Okay, and it's going to refresh automatically. Now we are getting here. Hello world. Okay, this is a very simple get endpoint that is returning this response. Like that. So what do we need to know exactly in Cloudflare? Essentially, as I mentioned, request and response. So let's let's inspect what's coming every time that we get a request, and let's inspect what um how we well let, let's see how we can respond from that server. Okay. For now, I'm sticking to just a plain vanilla um, JavaScript here, but in a second, we'll move into local de development because there are some tools that make it even, um, the developing experience is even better when you go to local and use some tools. You'll see that. So fetch, we got here an event. Okay, this is the event, the request that we're getting. This And the event contains a request, but also it contains a couple more things, I think. Um, it contains, let's let's just console it. Console log event like that. Okay, let's save this. And this event, it's, a, it's what they call a fetch event that contains um, the request. And then it also contains, um, I believe that we actually don't need to know anything about this. We can just jump into the actual request. Okay, the event contains a request. And this request has a body, has some headers, and also has some information that's specific to Cloudflare. It has a method. Okay, we'll we'll get deep into that into methods also. If you don't have experience about backend, I think it will be nice to know. And it also has the URL where this event was um, was um, emitted. Also, you can check the body, etc. Okay, so people can send some data into this endpoint. We can process it. We can do whatever we want with it, and then. We just need to return a response. This response, it's a regular, it's a regular response interface. Okay, so um, the Cloudflare environment, the Cloudflare runtime, um, tries to use the platform as much as it can. Uh, um, so both the request and the response objects are the ones that are built in the V8 and giant engine. So the the ones that are official, the JavaScript language. Okay, so the, the, the response has to just, uh, it just needs two things. The body that we're returning and then some optional options where we define, for example, the type of content. We can define some headers with it. So imagine in here, let me just go on the playground. Right now we're just returning some text and in, as it, see, I can update this and it returns that. But I could also, for example, return uh, an object. Right, I could just have, for example, test. And this is a hey ho object. Okay. And maybe I want to return that. So we would have to say JSON stringify because we always have to stringify things before sending them. And then we could append some headers as you would usually do with any request headers. And in here we can say content type is equals to application dot slash JSON. And now that's it. Now we have an official response. Am I missing something? Not JSON string. JSON string, if I am sorry. That returns some JSON. So now here we have already an API that is returning some data. Um, so very powerful, very simple to use. But we can we can keep improving this. So for today, so you can understand everything that can be done in Cloudflare. 
I have a proposal for you guys, and it's to create a simple to-do list that is accessible for everyone. So we'll have a Webflow project that will load all the existing to-dos, and there will be a form well, where all of you will be able to send out a new to-do, okay? And we'll have an API endpoint that, well, two, actually two API endpoints. One API endpoint that just returns all the to-dos that exist, and another API endpoint that creates new to-dos, okay? So with that, we can play around we, and see exactly how Coffee workers um, work in the background. It's really powerful. What do you guys think? If you agree, I think that I'm going to just create a new project from scratch and we can start doing stuff instead of being here in the club playground. Okay, cool. Great. So one of the things that, so you could start using Cloudflow workers, as I mentioned, just vanilla using using regular the the regular fetch event and returning a response okay but obviously same as for node.js there are many um frameworks like express fastify etc there are also frameworks that exist in the community for cloud workers that make things very very easy to do and my recommendation for you is that you check out uh whole node.js on JS, it's I actually already used this when I did the reverse proxy streams, if you recall. Um, this is just a a routing framework that it's super simple to implement. It kind of reminds to Express JS. So if you have experience in backend stuff with Node.js, it's gonna be very simple uh, for you to to use. And also it makes it very quick to create an app in Cloudflow Workers and deploy it. It's super simple. Okay, so I'm gonna use this. I'm going to follow the docs here to create a new app from scratch, and then we can start playing around with it. Okay. So first of all, let's just follow the getting started um, guide, and we'll use it for Cloudflare work. Yeah, you can see that it actually works for many different uh, runtimes, but we'll use Cloudflare work as in this case. Okay? We just have to use npm create, oh no, and then the app directory. Okay. If you know me, you will see, uh, you probably know already that I use PMPM instead of NPM, but if you don't want to use PMPM, you can totally use NPM. It's up to you guys, okay? But I'll do PMPM create, and then Hono latest. And I want it to be this directory, so I'll just add a dot. So if I did something like this, my app, then it would create a new folder and would put the app in that folder. But I'm already in the folder that I want to, where I want to have the app, so I'll just use a dot. And that's it. So it's asking me a couple of questions. First of all, I'm going to use this for Cloudflare workers like that. Uh, and actually, that's it because it's it has TypeScript support out of the box. It's really nice to use. And now the only thing that I have to do is run pmpm install because it has a couple of dependencies. It has the Honor.js dependency, which is the routing framework. It also has TypeScript definitions for Cloudflare. Very convenient. And the last thing that you can see, it's Wrangler, okay? Wrangler, it's the CLI tool for developing on local Cloudflare workers and also deploying to Cloudflare the, the, the worker itself, okay? It's, it's this tool, it's, it's developed by Cloudflare. Okay, now that we have installed everything, let's just inspect what's going on here. We just have a new Hono app. That's it, it this is the, 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 the router. And in the app, we can add as many routes as we want. In this case, it's just having a single route, the, the main entry, and we can return something from it. That's it. This is the simplest as it can get. So let's actually run this, okay? So we can run this by just saying uh, pmpm dev, okay? Because uh, KonoJ has already created two, two different commands for us. One command for developing in local and one command for deploying. That's it. It's super simple. Okay, so let's run pmpm dev like that. And the good thing of Cloudflare Workers is that um, with the Wrangler CLI, you have two ways of developing. You have a way of developing fully local, meaning that it's your machine that it's processing the requests and it's it's returning the responses. But also there is another option, which is the default one, 
that it's actually spinning up a Cloudflare worker in a server. So when you're testing stuff here in local, it actually goes out to a, a temporary server. It's processing your request and returning a response like it would do in production. So you're getting essentially the same uh, experience as doing requests in production, but while testing it in development, it's super powerful and, um, and very convenient actually. So the only thing that we have to do here, it's hit B to open a browser. And that's it. We already have our own server running and it's actually running from a Cloudflare worker that it's deployed somewhere in, in the edge network. Okay. Um, I can move this to just be fully local if I don't want to use um, my network because maybe you're developing offline or maybe you just want to do it, you know, very fast because you can see that if I refresh, <laughs> it takes like, I don't know, 10 milliseconds, but it could be even faster if you just make it local. So I, you could turn it local if you just hit L like this and now everything goes into local. It's almost the same thing, but I prefer to stick with the, with the default one. Okay, so let's play around with it. What can we do? Let's remember that we wanted to do two things. We wanted to have an endpoint that returns the all the to-dos, and we wanted to have an endpoint that allows people to create new to-dos. Okay, so we have to have we have to create two different routes. For now, we just have one route, which is this one, that it's saying okay from the 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 main route from the the domain, just return a response that it's text and it's hello Hono, like this. Okay, great. Let's just inspect this. And um, from this endpoint where we're sending out a request, we're getting a response that already contains all the headers necessary for how to serve the content as expected. Okay, let's let's remember that this content is set to be text. So it already includes the headers for the content type, I think, that it's saying, okay, this is a plain text. It also includes some headers from Cloudflare because let's remember that this is actually coming from from um, from a Cloudflare worker that it's deployed already in the Edge network. So very, very convenient because you can see how Cloudflare is already processing that. Okay. Um, we could change that to be, for example, CJSON. Oops. See JSON, and this is something that Hono.js provides. It makes it very simple to send out JSON responses. And let's see, for example, that just by typing this, returning a CJSON method from here, um, then this is, let's refresh, returning already JSON. This is returning an object with message equals to hello world. And we, if we inspect this, you can see how the response headers already include the proper content type. It's saying that it's application JSON, and the preview it includes the 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 body with message equals to hello world. So Hono.js provides a bunch of 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 easy methods to to create the responses that you would like to implement in your regular backend. Okay, cool. So let's create. Let me just roll back this to be just text like this. Hello world like that. Okay, so let's create the first route. So let's say get slash to do's like this. Okay. And this has to return something. Okay, you can see that if I'm not returning anything, I'm getting an error because Hono.js is expecting me to pass something like, okay, wh what should I be returning from here? Um, so let's open this. And for now, I'll disable mobile. Um, for now, let's just return a very basic response, okay? So I could say return a response. Hey, like that. That's it, okay? Um, oh, return a new response. Sorry, like that. Because you can, as as if you remember, call for work is just expecting to get a response. That's it. You get a request, it's expecting a response. So if we inspect this, and we go now to slash to-dos, and here, slash to-dos, now we're getting this response. Hey, okay. The only thing that we can do with the with the Hono framework is use some helper methods to make it even easier to use. Okay, so let's pull out the Hono.js documentation and let's check the API. Uh, routing, 
you can see how it explains how we can implement different uh, routes. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, what I want to show you is the context API. Because this context API, you can see how it includes some helpers to create the proper responses. It includes some helpers to, in uh, to inject headers, to change the status, to just send some raw bodies. You can even create um, raw responses from scratch if you want to. It has a method for sending out text responses that are out of the box JSON responses, as we've seen in a second. Don't worry about this one because I'm I'm kind of confuse you. You can send HTML data too. So we could say, for example, hey, return, hey, uh, see HTML, and we can just return some HTML. So let me, for example, HTML, and I'm gonna, nope, I'm gonna do this. And I'm going to say h1. Hey. So essentially, this is some HTML that I would like to send out. I don't know why, but maybe you want to send a document that just has a heading. You can do it. You just have to pass it as a string with this HTML helper. Now, if we check this, now we're going to get this hey as a regular HTML page that contains the head, the body, and these h1. So essentially, you can return all types of, of data that are expected from a from any backend application. Okay, Let me go back like this. So let's remember we want to list to dos from here. Okay, so let's let me let me ask you something. What do you think that would happen if I have here my to dos in local? Let's create one to do. To do, to do two, to do three. Okay. Let's imagine that I have my list of to dos. So I'm just going to say return CJSON and my to dos like this. So the only thing that I've done, let me just uh, explain, is I've, I've created a local, I've created a local variable that contains all the to dos. Okay. One to do, two to dos, three to dos. And then from this endpoint, uh, slash to do's, I'm just returning that data as JSON. Let's just check it out for a second. And you can see how I'm already getting the to do's. Okay, this is good. I can serve some content, and this content could be used by an application, right? But there's a problem. Imagine that I wanted then to create a, a post standpoint for to do's like this. And this to do, just does that. Look, Copilot is already smart enough to know it. Actually, I thought I disabled it. Um, so you would expect, okay, because a server, it's running, right? It means that it's going to remember these to-dos variable. And now when I push a new to-do to it, it's just going to store it in here. It's just going to say to-do, the new to-do, etc. So then the next time that we call these to dos, it's going to return the updated variable of to dos, right? Do you think it should work? And why do you think that it should work? Or the opposite, why do you think that it would not work in case that it, it would? Okay, let me go back to here uh, about how workers works. Okay, let me show you what happens every time that you call a worker. Anytime that you call a worker, Okay, it's, let's imagine that you're somewhere in the world. Maybe you're located here in the middle of Africa. I don't know. And it's on that you that you call an API, uh, an API endpoint that it's served from a Cloudflare worker. Your data is going to be sent out to the closest center. Okay, and in that center, just a tiny piece of a machine that it's randomly allocated. It's not always the same one. Just one random. Um, what's the, they, they call it isolates. One random tiny piece of, the, of a machine, it's going to process that request, okay? But the machine is not going to be the same one on every request. Every single request is isolated. But uh, that's why they call it isolates, okay? Meaning that if I have a friend next to me and that friend is also sending requests to the same website, a different machine is going to process that. A different isolate, it's going to process that. And same happens for anybody who is on any other part of the world. 
every time that you send a request to Cloudflare, the isolate, that's how they call it, that it's processing that request and returning a response is, as the name says, it's isolated. It's completely independent. So it's not persistent, correct. Um, this is ephemeral. Every time that you get a, a, a request, this is going to be created from scratch. Meaning that this variable is going to be created from scratch. All these routes are going to be created from scratch. You cannot have local state. It, well, you can if you want to you know, do something during the same request. Let's imagine that, for example, you do something like, I don't know, it wouldn't make sense, but it would be possible, like text. And then you want to do some calculations, and then you want to say text plus equals to hey, and then maybe if whatever, then text plus equals to blah, blah, okay? And then you want to return that text. That can be done, but always think that it's in the same request. The moment that the response is sent out, this worker, it's going to disappear. It's going to be destroyed. So no, no persistency, no local state, no anything. What happens in the request stays in the request. <laughs> so Cloudflare Workers is like bakers. <laughs> Just think of it like that. <laughs> okay. One request, one response, that's it. Next time that you <laughs> next time that you interact with a Cloudflare worker, it's gonna be a new one. It's gonna be a different machine. It's gonna be a different isolate. Okay, so this is very important to understand. Because usually when when you are familiar with traditional server approaches, you're you think about okay, it's the same server. So every time that I connect with the server that I send a request, that server, it's still the same machine, meaning that I can save files in there. I can have local state. I can, you know, it can remember you. But a worker, it's not going to remember you. A worker, it's always going to be going to be a different isolate every time that you send a request. And this is actually why it's infinitely scalable. Okay. Uh, usually when you have a server, you have like a max amount of requests that it can process at the same time because it's the same machine. Meaning that if you have, I don't know, like a million people calling that machine at the same time, that machine is going to explode, right? But in, in serverless and specifically about in Cloudflare workers, which is what we're talking about, it's, it can be any machine. So it doesn't matter the amount of requests that you send out unless the data center blows up for any reason, for, I don't know, like a bump or something, <laughs> you're going to get an essentially infinite amount of processing. doesn't matter. You can throw it out any amount of requests. It's not going to, it's not going to break. So this is also another very powerful thing about the, the serverless approach. But anyway, and enough talk, let's just focus back again to here. So if we cannot have it locally, then what should we do? right? Because we cannot have it here in the workers. Then where should we store this? We need a database. We need somewhere where we can have this and store it. Okay. We can, we can, we're going to have an endpoint that will receive a to-do for the user. And that to-do, that, that data, we have to put it somewhere. So then when we try to retrieve it, that data is persistent. It's, it's, it's staying somewhere and it's not destroyed because of the isolate. Okay. And in Cloudflare, there are actually two services that are built in. It couldn't be more convenient. There are two services. Each one has its own purposes. And let me show you. The first service, it's what's called KV. Let me see one second. KV. Okay. KV is essentially a key value data store. Let's, let's go back to what I was mentioning. For data persistence, we could use any kind of database. We're not limited to Cloudflare, which means that if you have a Postgres database that it's hosted somewhere, you can use that. If you want to use MongoDB, you can use it. If you want to use Firebase to store the data, you can use it. It's, it's completely fine. But Cloudflare also has two built-in um, data storage methods. One is the Cloudflare KB, and the other one is Cloudflare D1. Okay. Let me just explain super quick. Cloudflare KB is a key value pair storage, meaning that it's a very, very, very simple way of storing stuff. You can just store stuff by passing a key and a value. That's it. It's not a table. 
It's not a, a NoSQL database. It's, it's not a database at all. It's just a simple storage where you can send um, stuff that it's um, identified with a key and that contains a string value. And you can think of it the same way that the local, uh, local storage works. So if I do something like local storage set item like this, and I say, this is my key. And this is my value like this. This is the same thing of Cloudflare workers, of KB, sorry, but it would be on the server. It would be on a data center instead of in your machine. So you can send stuff with a key and a string value. Very simple, and this is what we're gonna use today. But if you have a more complex use case where you really need to store stuff in tables, um, there's a service that's called D1, that it's still in beta, but it's essentially a database. It's it's a, um, I think it's a pro Postgres. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an SQL database where you can create any amount of tables and you can um, consume that. And the advantage of that is that it's still in the edge, meaning that the, the database is located everywhere instead of being on a specific data center. So it's still, it's still following the same concept of having the data as closest as possible to the users. Okay. But I don't want to, you know, uh, give you too much information. Let's just go and use KB. Okay. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is create that store. Okay. And I'll just go to Cloudflare. And here, this is uh, the FinSuite account for Cloudflare. And inside Cloudflare, you will see that there's a section called workers. And workers essentially has all the workers that are currently currently deployed. In my case, I'm just whoops, I'm just gonna sorry. Um, in our case, we have a bunch of workers. We have one one for the FinSuite accounts. We have one for the Noble Airtable. We have one for the reverse proxy. So we have a bunch of uh, workers that we use. And then also there is this KB section where you can create. Um, what they call namespaces, which is essentially a store, okay? And I'll create that. So let me just create one. And for now, I'll call this stream uh, to do's like this, okay? And that's it. That's already deployed. That's already, that. It, um, we can use it. So I can access it and here in the UI, I could say, hey, um, random key, whatever, and my value, okay, whatever. Like that, so I've, I'm already able to send out data from here and to consume data also from here. So the last thing that we have to do is just okay. How how do we access this from a worker? Right, we have to somehow connect this to a Cloudflare worker. Um, one of the things that I wanted to say, um, just some explanation. So I'll just do it super quick now. Is that uh, when you have a Cloudflare worker project? There is this file called Wrangler that contains your configurations in case that you you know you have to pass some settings. By default, you just would have to worry about a name. So, for example, let's call this Stream Cloudflow Workers, but you can call it however you want. And here we can pass some information. Okay, and the information that I need right now is just I want to access that KB store that I just created. So I'll just have to pass it here. And let's say work is KB, I think. Uh, nope. Or maybe, yes. Yeah. So I'll just have to pass this KB namespaces. And I have to pass the, the binding. And in my case, this binding, it's going to be called stream to do's. This is how I called it. So let's call this stream to do's. And then I need an ID. And this ID, it's this one. And automatically, now, Cloudflare is going to know, okay, we have a binding to uh, this KB store. We know that it's called stream to do's and the ID is the one that identifies this. So now I can already access it. I can send out data to it and I can receive data from it. Okay. And one last thing, because we're in local, I'll create something additional that's called preview ID. And I'll do the same. Um, this is just to make it uh, local instead of deploying in production. Let's deploy this just now, super quick. Because so far I've just been showing you how to use it in local, but I want to show you first how easy it is to deploy this worker. 
Okay, before moving on with the KB store, let's just remember we have two endpoints. We have an endpoint that is returning hello world when we hit it, and another one that is returning these to dos that it's static, so it's you know it's not very useful, but it works. Okay. Um, so if I run this npm deploy like this npm deploy, um, the first thing. Oh, sorry, pnpm run deploy like this. Um, the first time that you do this, you're gonna be prompt to log in into Gopher because you have to um, you have to to identify to Gopher. But I'm already logged in, and now that's it. That's already deployed, and Cloudflare very conveniently creates a temporary URL for me, and I'm just gonna send it out here. So it took me literally 10 seconds to deploy an API that is available all around the world, that it's free for me because I'm not paying for it, that you can access and it can scale infinitely without worrying about anything. So maybe now you can understand why this is so powerful and why I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> um, okay, so you can access this. You can also access the slash to do's. So you can um, you can also access that endpoint, okay? And if I want to do any changes, let's say, for example, instead of hanging hello world, I want to say hello, Gabriel, like this. I have my changes. I'll just do PM, PM deploy again. And we're going to wait, I don't know, 10 seconds, something like that. This is your moment, Gabriel. And that's it. So now if we visit again, now we get, <laughs> hello, Gabriel. So look how easy it is to deploy a worker. Um, you, look how easy it is to connect to other services like KB. I'll show you in a second. We can extend today's stream like 10 minutes. It is very simple to do everything. It's super simple, okay? And let's go to my dashboard in here. And this is my Cloudflare da dashboard. I'll go to workers, overview, and we can see that the stream already contains the worker that is deployed. And this worker, it gives you a lot of metrics, a lot of information. You can see all the requests. You can see how long is it taking um, uh, off CPU time. You can, um, you can even add some logging into it. So you can literally do this. Give me a second, because I want to show you cool stuff. Um, Maybe before returning this, I want to console log. And the body is accessing the example like this. Okay. And this console log, let me deploy this. You'll see it now in a second because it's very convenient. It's very powerful. Okay. Um, so it's been deployed right now. And now I can trick. I can turn on log streams. Can somebody please visit the site, just for for fun? Just go ahead and open this. Okay. See, I'm seeing all of you guys accessing <laughs> the site. I can see at real time everything that we're getting, and also I can console log stuff from it. So I can know now. Okay, somebody's accessing this endpoint, and I can know exactly who is it. <laughs> I can I can see your API uh, IPs. You can see exactly everything from uh, the user agent. Um, yeah, you can see a bunch of information from people, and this logging is very convenient. You know, maybe you're debugging stuff and you want to know exactly maybe the state of here. Maybe you're having a bug or something. Just slap in a console log, and that's it. And you can see live in production how how it's being treated. Very convenient. Okay, let's deploy again. Let's stop this. Let's pause this. I don't want to keep logging stuff. And the last thing is that in the settings, we can have um, environment environment variables with private stuff, like, you know, some private API keys, things like that. You can add them. And also, you can have KB bindings, which is what we already did. Remember that we set it up here in my config file. We have these stream to do's that it's connected already here. Okay. So let me do super quick something. Let's do, um, I'll create 
just one type. Okay, so let me just quickly do something. Let me say... Uh, you know what? Yeah, so let me say type uh, context, just one second. And in here, there's going to be bindings and stream to do KB namespace. And I'll pass that to Hono.js. Okay, um, so what I've just did here is add some extra types. So TypeScript knows that we have a binding to stream to do's and that it's a KB namespace. So this is something that Hono already provides so we can work better with, with it. Um, so here, let me get rid of these to do's that are listed here. And instead, we want to list the to do's from the KB store. Let's remember that the KB store, it already has one record that I created. Let's create another one. Let's say, um, I don't know, ba ba ba. This is the key. And I'll say, Dimitri says the pro, the service is cool, like that. Okay. <laughs> um, so now we have two entries. Okay. Look how easy it is to now fetch this, retrieve this and serve it to the users. I'll just say um, items await and see and and this is just the the bindings. And TypeScript already knows about this because I've passed the information in here. So stream to do's and this essentially just has some basic methods. Delete, get, list, put and get with metadata which we don't care about right now. So I'll just say list like that. And this essentially, whoops, I need to make it a sync. And this essentially, it's going to return all the results that we get from this KB. So let me just return this like this. I'll deploy it. Let's wait a second. And now we can go to the API that it's been deployed to slash to do's. And boom, that's it. See how easy it is to just have my own backend that serves data from my own data store. This is the end of today's stream. Um, so far, we've seen how to create a basic worker, how to add some routing on top of it with Hono.js. We've seen how to use some of the integrations that Copper Workers has to store uh, persistently some data in the data centers. Um, we've used KB for now. And in the next stream, we're going to deep dive a little bit more. We're going to de go deeper and try to create a real application, not just some random test uh, endpoints, but actually do something for good. <laughs> um, so see you in the next stream. Thank you for being here. If you like this content, leave a like and ask anything in the comments. I will appreciate that. And we'll try to answer you back and see you in the next Friday. See y'all. Bye. <laughs>